At long last, we can say it. Minnie Minoso will soon be inducted into the Hall of Fame. After an extraordinarily long career that included nearly a decade's worth of seasons with the White Sox, the Cuban Comet was selected for induction by the Golden Days Era Committee on Sunday. Minoso broke the color line for the White Sox when he joined the team in 1951 and had a home run in his very first at bat. He quickly became a fan favorite known for his exuberant style of play and his fleet feet. Here's Mr. White Sox himself talking to WTTW in 1995 about how Sox fans would chant for him to steal bases, a chant that became a familiar team nickname. Go, 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 mini, mini, go. So he started, and after that, go, White Sox, go, go. I think without I put anything in myself, I started the go, go, White Sox. Joining us to talk about this cap on a storied career are Chicago-based baseball writer Shakia Taylor, also Minnie Minoso's son, Charlie Rice Minoso. Thanks so much. Let's start with you, Charlie. This has been a long time coming. What did it feel like to get that call yesterday? Bittersweet is the best way to describe it. Uh, we're so honored that dad is being recognized and his contributions are, are being uh, highlighted in, in the way that they have been, um, especially given you know uh, what dad and his career means to so many different audiences. And uh, in particular, dad didn't, dad didn't check any, did, dad didn't fit into uh, any box neatly. And that's, that's just who he was as a person. Uh, and the fact that he means so much to Black, Latino, and Afro-Latino players and uh, audiences, I think that's that's very powerful. And so it, it means a lot for, for that to still be remembered. However, it's bittersweet because he's not here to, to celebrate with us, although we are still very, very appreciative of, of this recognition. And he had always wanted to receive this honor. It's something that he talked about, right? It, it was, but at the same time, he he just felt, you know, if if it didn't happen, or then it didn't happen. It didn't mean that his impact was uh, lessened. It didn't mean that his contributions were uh, not um, impactful. It just it just meant that might not have been in the cards for him, and uh, he didn't let that uh, dull or dim his light at all. And I think that's something extremely admirable um, and something I think we all can, can learn from from dad. Character off the baseball field. Now, Shikia, speaking of that, what has changed for Minoso's candidacy since his first bid for the Hall of Fame? Um, since uh, Minnie's first bid, which was in uh, 1968, um, his career actually continued longer than any other person in uh, Major League Baseball history. So he got more time in the league. But then also in 2020, uh, with, you know, everything happening in the country, Major League Baseball announced that they would be sort of acknowledging Negro League uh, as Major Leagues. And so when those stats came into play, it definitely padded or added to Minnie's candidacy. Um, it's undeniable. 2,000 hits. Um, he stole so many bases. It definitely sealed the deal that the Negro Leagues became something that people started looking to. It's pretty incredible also to think of any baseball player retiring and then keep on coming back in the field, just the athleticism that that shows. Now, uh, Charlie, you did describe this as uh, receiving an honor posthumously uh, is bittersweet. You lost your father in 2015. Just briefly, what, what does this mean to you and to members of the family? It, it means a great deal because while he's not with us physically, it means that he, he isn't gone. And uh, just keeping his memory and legacy alive is, um, it's our, it's, a, <laughs> it, it, it's how we know that he's, he's still here and he's still present and, and although he might not physically be here with us. Um, it, it, I, I also felt as though it was a way to honor uh, the sacrifices that our family made when we had to share him with the world. Um, mo most notably when he was away for long periods in a foreign country uh, and away from my siblings when they were growing up. And uh, 
he 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 played year round, uh, whether it was uh, you know in the winter or he, and not here in uh, in the MLB, but you know whether it was you know back in Cuba, and Mexico, and other places. And so I feel like this recognition is is also an honoring of of that time away and the sacrifices that you know that are my siblings and you know my you know our, our extended family had to make for and his career. Well, and now being brought into the Hall of Fame, fans who didn't get a chance to see Minoso playing at his peak will perhaps learn more about him and his legacy. Shaquille, what did make him so exceptional, especially during the, the peak of play? Um, Minnie was, I believe, just the sixth uh, player of color to break the barrier, which is a tremendous trailblazing feat. Um, he was known, you know, for stealing bases, um, doing just wild catches where he'd run into the outfield wall. Um, he was, he played with a lot of heart. He played with a lot of passion. Jay Jaffe actually used a phenomenal quote about uh, Minnie as a player, and it was, he played with reckless abandon, aimed always at achieving nothing short of total victory. His was flair with a clear work ethic. He stole bases with a game on the line, harassed pitchers with daring base running ploys, took extra bases and made impossible wall crashing catches. I think Minnie was the early version of let the kids play. He he played in a way that I think today we would we would love. It would be along the likes of Fernando Tatis or Jazz Chisholm Jr. Just giving us passion on the field and off of it. So much passion. You know, Charlie, I, I was wondering, just we have less than a minute left here, but I was hoping, could you tell us at all, did he ever talk about the discrimination that he did face in his career? He, of course, was beloved in Chicago, a real icon among not just White Sox fans, but all Chicagoans, but also did face some some true mean behavior no absolutely he, he, he discussed that um while he discussed it he still made sure to not uh, be bitter about it so so for example uh, the the fact that dad uh, you know, led in, in terms of uh hits by pitch part of that was yes he you know was part of a strategy for him to crowd the base so he could get on field as she had mentioned he was a cuban comet who who could you know dash from from base to base and, and get those steals and runs however um th th that is also a clear example of the hatred that he that was uh he was experiencing on the field and there uh, so congressman steve cohen has has mentioned numerous times of the the first time that he encountered my dad um it was at an ex exhibition game in memphis in during the height of the segregation era the, in the jim crow south and dad was the only player who who uh, gave a ball to uh, a, this young Steve Cohen uh, who had polio and, and couldn't couldn't uh, get to the front of the of the field to uh, to get autographs from uh, other players. And he, dad had to have a ball sent by a white player to Steve because he didn't feel comfortable coming up to a white child. Uh, during the the 50s in, even, in Jim Crow South. Even in doing and trying to express a measure of kindness. Well, congratulations to your family and to your father posthumously. Um, and thank to each of you for joining us. That is Shakia Taylor and Charlie Rice Minoso. Thanks for having us.